Path of Exile 2 is releasing into early access this Friday, and the hype is absolutely insane. And as someone who's played a bunch of Path of Exile 1, I kind of just know that Path of Exile 2 is going to be a banger of a game. And there's this weird thing happening where content creators are taking any little piece of information, glazing it up. And I'm watching people like Darth Microtransaction react to something that Ziz is reacting to where somebody is interviewing Jonathan Rogers, who's the game director of Path of Exile 2, and everybody's just ripping apart all this information. And there's this crazy reaction, and I'm here for it. Because at the end of the day, Grinding Gear Games has built so much goodwill and so much respect with their community and their player base that this level of hype is almost a given because of all the work they've done to show us that they know how to make mistakes. And I think that is one of the qualities of grinding gear games that I want to learn the most as a solo developer. I'm I'm relatively new to the game development space, having only been making games for a couple years now and having only one commercial game out there and working on my next commercial game, Hexagod, right now. I'm learning that the cost of making a game is not in having a good idea or 50 good ideas. It is figuring out which of those 50 good ideas is good or are any of them good. And sometimes you have to crack a few eggs to figure that out. And sometimes you have to build out that full system and give it to your player base and see if it's actually good because ideas in your brain versus how like somebody actually plays it are very, very different. And I think as game developers and designers, one of the big lessons I've learned is that an idea in an intended gameplay uh, loop is not necessarily what the actual player does. And it's almost impossible for you as the developer to play your game. You can give players a bunch of interesting decisions and do different things. But at the end of the day, like when Grinding Gear cooks on a league, they kind of push it out and they don't necessarily know if it's gonna be successful, but they have the bravery to take giant swings and miss in giant ways. A lot of the times their leagues, which they've been, they've been making every couple months for the past decade, will be huge misses. They'll try to cook on it here and there by adding a new patch or balancing or something like that. And sometimes it does help, but sometimes you'll, at the end of the league, they'll remove something and you'll never see it again because they've learned and grown. Or, or sometimes you'll see it uh, pop up in a couple more leagues with some uh, big changes and big improvements based off the learning. And I think that that willingness for them to throw away large chunks of work because it simply isn't good is why I admire Grinding Gear Games so much as a studio and why I wanna emulate their development process. I'm not saying I'm gonna make an ARPG game or anything close to the size or scale of Path of Exile 1 or Path of Exile 2, but what I can say and what I can want to do is to take giant swings because I think through doing that, us as game developers will not only learn how to make good games and stumble across ideas that are magnificent, new, and frankly, just fun to play, but we'll also start building goodwill with players to show that, hey, we're gonna take big swings, we're gonna take big risks, but know that in the end of it all, I'm going to make a good game that's fun as long as you stick with it in the long haul. I think right now, a lot of players are buying big 60, 70, $80 games and saying, oof, this one's not fun. Like think of sports games. Sports games back in the day used to be fun. They used to be huge new improvements, but they're just like new roster updates and stuff like that. Or how many Call of Duty games are just kind of respun out and repushed out and just un, un, uninspiring. And more than anything, it feels like they're just trying to take more money from you as a player, which I get it. It's a business. You want to make money from things, but I don't want to feel that you're trying to suck money from me by giving me FOMO of missing out on the, the newest Call of Duty servers or the newest rosters of the sports games or um, needing to uh, use pay to win mechanics because if I don't, I'm going to fall behind or just never be as good as people who put in 10, 20, 30, $1,000 into a game, which is a wild statement. Grinding your games doesn't do stuff like that. Sure, there are microtransactions you can buy and that's the main way they fund their studio. And, and there are some stash tabs that are kind of required if you're going to play the game for more than 50, 60 hours. But I think fundamentally speaking, they're trying to make a game that is so good you can't help but buy a supporter pack because you want to support the studio because the content they're making is that high of quality that of course you're going to you're going to do it. And so I think going into Path of Exile 2, I'm excited. I'm beyond hyped. I'm beyond inspired as a game developer. Again, not to make 
a new Path of Exile game myself, but just to go take swings, to know that it's okay if I miss and that I can rip stuff out. I don't have to keep it there because I spent a couple months cooking on it. I can put it in, it can be bad, and that can be okay. And then you can circle back, take the lessons learned and make something better in the future. We should all be so lucky to be in a position like Grinding Gear Games where our players are insanely hyped, but you don't get that through being lucky. You get that through grinding, Grinding Gear Games, you get that through grinding out patch after patch of gaining goodwill with your players and simply put, making a game that's fun to play. I've been Aramis. I cannot wait for Path of Exile 2 to be released. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one. Good luck out there, Exiles. Bye-bye.